areas. History is a definite collection of facts gathered through your senses via external stimuli and stored in your brain for later reference. So that in the event of coming into any like circumstance, you won't have to ponder or wonder or scratch your head because of what you already got in your head. Come here for a minute. I said history is a definite collection of facts. Therefore, therefore, David's reasoning and rationale behind his emotive expression was because of the fact he had some facts. I need to hear somebody shout, I've got some facts. This is not for you. This is for the one sitting next to you that's rendered a critical commentary about your conduct in the sanctuary. And the reason is because all they have is a narrow view. Talk to me, somebody, if you can. They've got a narrow. They didn't see it all. They only saw what they saw. But if you really told them what you came through, what you've been through, what you had to get over, how God had to bring you out, how God had to pick you up, they are shot along with you. I need to hear somebody shout, I've got some facts. It's a fact the Lord answered my prayers. It's a fact the Lord lifted my burden. It's a fact the Lord dried my tears. It's a fact the Lord healed my body. It's a fact he saved my soul. Tell somebody, that's a fact check. That's why you need to get up off of people's praise. You don't know the past. I need you to help me appreciate anybody on your own. Tell them, leave my story alone. Leave my shout alone because you don't know the story behind my shout. You don't know what the Lord has done for me. I need to hear somebody shout its intention. David retorted to his wife, you think this is undignified. Give me a little time and I'll be more undignified because the Lord has allowed me to recover what the enemy stole. Let me try this out. Let me try this out. I know we're saved. We're sanctified, born again, blood bought, blood washed, blood cleansed, heaven bound, hands wrapped up in the wine and chained, feet set on the glory road, mind made up, already been to the water, already been baptized, soul been converted, feeling all right, but somehow, somewhere, along the way, the enemy crept in and stole what the Lord gave. And we're not exempt, beloved, from satanic attack. I said, we're not exempt from satanic attack, you can look at your nation's capital and see that. And while you have those in government contending that all of our problems are coming from over a border, an international border, and we therefore need walls to stop them from coming in because of terrorism and gang violence. Well, the worst thing that have ever happened to America didn't happen to America because of people for coming, for coming over a wall. The worst terrorists in history rode horseback and wore hoods on their heads and burned crosses in our yard. They didn't come over a wall. We were sold 
on auction blocks. And while they are separating families at borders now and locking them up in cages, separating children from parents, mind you, that's not the first time America has ever separated families. Separated your family, my family, you can look down your road. You're looking at your cousins. You might as well call them, hey, cuz, because you don't know who your kinfolk are. This is not the first time. We're not exempt from satanic attack. Love your children, love them. Love your home, love your family. But um, don't uh, deify them because the enemy can get to your stuff. You didn't hear me? And I know she's cute and a little cuddly and wearing little bangs and barrettes and little socks with a little ruffle of lace and a little patent leather shoes. And you, and you laugh when they do their little childhood dances, but they soon become teenagers. And you, and you find out the enemy can get to your stuff. I can't hear too good. And you leave from the altar having exchanged promises between bow tie and tuxedo, and they threw rice in your face, and, and they tied cans on your bumper as you were leaving, and they wrote big words on your car as you went on off into some kind of premarital bliss. And no sooner than when the honeymoon was over, you found out that the enemy <laughs> and it left you sad and sobbing and sorrowful and you're now crawling into a corner lamenting with Luther and listening to Sade. But hold your head up, beloved. Can I tell you why? God can affect your circumstance to the extent that no matter what the enemy stole from you, he'll give you the power and ability to get it all back. That's the reason why some of us are shouting in here today. We had love lost it and the Lord helped us to get it back. Got your joy back. Got your peace back. Got your love back. Got your spirit back. Got your excitement back. Got your shout back. I wish I had a praying church here. Thank God I got it back. If you got it, let me hear you. If you know he gave it back to you, you didn't have to buy it. He helped you to get it back. I need to hear somebody, I need to hear somebody shout, is it intentional? What David did in expressing his appreciation, adoration, honor, and affection, and applause for God was because he was a recipient of God's mercy. I'm going to quit in a minute. I just feel like it. I just feel like it today. I'm going to quit in a minute, Pastor. But I've received too much mercy. Oh, you, don't, you act like you don't know what mercy is. It's not grace. I need to hear somebody shout, that's just favor. And it's good favor. That's when you get what you don't deserve. But mercy is when I don't get what I do deserve. And what we do deserve is the judgment of God. But you miss your shout cue every time because we deserve to be dead in our graves and in hell. But the Lord didn't give us what we did deserve. If I had about two of you, I'll make three who won't mind shouting, I thank God for his mercy.
when you read Psalm 33, verse 18, he will tell you that the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him and have hope in his mercy. When you read Psalm 94, 18, he will tell you my feet almost slipped, but God's mercy held me up. When you read Psalm 103, verse 17, he will tell you God's mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. When you read Psalms 23, verse 6, he will tell you that goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. When you read James chapter 5, verse 11, it will tell you that God is pitiful and of tender mercy. When you read Jude 1, 21, it will tell you to keep yourself in the love of God and look for his mercy. When you read Psalm 100, verse 5, it will tell you that his mercy is everlasting. If you forget any verse I just quoted, just hear the words of Frank Williams when he said, Your grace and mercy brought me through. I'm living this moment because of you. I want to praise you. I want to thank you to your grace. The text said when David came back to Jerusalem, he offered burnt offerings and a peace offering. Don't you miss this? The burnt offering was the consumption of a sacrifice in behalf of a penitent sinner in that the penitent sinner or repenting sinner knew that they had a pitiful, petty, petulant, and perverted past that the church said, what you say, Reverend? That means they did something bad. And the offering was indicative of their repentance and their sorrow. The peace offering was indicative of one relationship with God being in symbolism restored. You miss me again. When David went to capture the ark, he got it from the home of Abinadab. Abinadab had two sons, one named Uzzah, the other Ohio. On their way back, the ark was loaded on an ox cart, came to Nathan's vineyard, and the ox cart got in a rut and caused the ark to tilt and trouble. Uzzah reached out to catch the ark to keep it from falling, and God killed him on the spot. Are y'all listening to me? And David became afraid of God took the ark, oh praise his name, and later having brought it back to Jerusalem while on the way, they had to make their way under the auspices of mercy. Let the church say, say it another way. Uzzah was doing the right thing and God took him out. David did everything but right and God let him live. Y'all gonna catch it in about 10 seconds. Let me try those on my left side. I said, David's celebration was intentional. My celebration is intentional. I hope that yours is intentional because you too, like me, we are recipients of God's mercy. You still don't get it? David lived a life of deception. Yes. Your 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want David. Yes, your Psalm 150, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord, David. Yes, your Psalm 34, 1, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth, David. Are y'all listening to me? But that David had a horrible, hideous, hideous, and hellish history. Having wanted a woman so bad he had a husband put on the battle front and had her killed because he couldn't stand to see her take her son back. I wish I had a praying church here. And of all the things that David did, God killed Uzzah 
for doing what was right and let David live with a history of nothing but wrong. David is sitting here right now. You smoke just as much dope as anybody else. You pull as many slot machines as everybody else. You drunk as much liquor as everybody else. You laid with it, played with it, teased it, smelled it, kissed on it just as much as everybody else. Are y'all listening to me? But the Lord killed them and let you live. And you mean to tell me you come up in the house of God and sit like a knot on a log and never say a mumbling word? He gave you mercy. You ought to praise him intentionally. Come on, come on, come on, let's tell your neighbor, me too, me too, I did it, I'm guilty, but that's all right, he looked, oh, 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 oh. he looked beyond my faults and he saw, if you know you woke up with mercy, shout like it. If you know he, if you know he kept you with mercy, you ought to shout like it. Forget the car, forget the house, thank God for the house, thank you for the car, thank you for the clothes. But I tell you what I'm really thanking him for, he showed me mercy. Come on, I need you to help me preach to about three people on your row. I need you to just yell out to them. He showed me mercy. Turn around and tell about four of them behind you. Go ahead and tell them. He showed me mercy. Anybody shouting very much? If, if you know it was mercy, y'all be praying them like it right about now. That explains it. That explains it. How David made his way back without a spear in his side. Mercy. Beloved, that's how you made it. Mercy. How do you explain fighting on foreign soil and then coming back to your native land without a bullet in your body or laying in a box? Mercy. How do you explain it? When people around you are dying over crazy stuff. But then your eyes flew out open right early this morning. Somebody shout mercy. How do you explain groceries, food on your table? Without you even making the groceries, I need about nine of you to shout mercy. How do you explain your bills being paid without one bill in your pocket, a roof over your head? Somebody ought to shout mercy. You came out of an accident. Uh-huh, and it wasn't because you were such a good driver. But you came out without scar or scratch. And if you came out without scar or with scar and a scratch, 
if you can see the scratch and if you could see the scar it's a sign that you still came out alive I need to hear somebody shout mercy other people went in the hospital just like you but some didn't make it out but thank God you're here today alive and well with decent health in your body I need to hear somebody shout God show me mercy mercy suits my case oh praise his name David told his wife your problem is your view is too narrow if you knew what I know you'd celebrate like I celebrate oh bless the Lamb of God David danced out of his clothes yes and his wife said that was without dignity and David responded the next time you see me dance I will be more undignified help me preach to somebody on your row uh, and tell them uh, if I get on your nerves uh, I'm sorry if I'm bothering you uh, the way I'm expressing myself uh, today I'm sorry if I'm a little too loud for you I'm sorry but you might not want to sit by me next Sunday you might want to get in another seat next Sunday because the next time you see me my shout will be louder then than it is now my shout will be greater than it is now you might want to avoid me because the more the Lord blesses me the more I'm gonna praise his name the more the Lord opens doors for me the more I'm gonna praise his name the more the Lord answers my prayers the more he lifts my burden the more he mends my broken heart the more he makes a way out of no way the more he picks me up and turns me around the more I praise his name and when I praise him it's not by accident I came here today intentionally when you see me wave my hand it's intentional when you see me shout for joy it's intentional when you see me do my dance it's intentional when you hear me shout hallelujah yeah! it's intentional shake somebody's hand and tell them the Lord has been too good to me the Lord has been too merciful the Lord has been too loving the Lord has been too kind for me not to give him praise I got to praise him I tell you the reason why if it had not been for the Lord on my side where would I be give me about nine of you I'll make ten get on out of your seat get on out of your seat come on down the aisle find your two people get out of your seat go find you somebody who know that the Lord has been mighty good go find you somebody put your hand in their hand squeeze it real tight and tell a neighbor this is no accident it was no accident that the Lord healed me it was no accident that the Lord blessed me it was no accident that he made a way and since it was no accident I came to church to shout my shout to praise my praise and give God glory go ahead right now 
shout right now intentionally give him glory right now intentionally leave your leap praise the praise in the house right now give him glory